I want to tell you a story about a health and safety manager I once knew. Between the stuffy, dimly lit office and the takeaway in which he partook, one could say he wasn't the healthiest of gentlemen. But he was an absolute stickler for two things in particular. Firstly, he proclaimed, you must always lift boxes in this exact way, lest you damage your back. And secondly, look at this diagram. This is the optimal way to sit. If you still want a good posture and a working body by the age of 50, then you must follow this method to a T. By his mid 40s, this health and safety manager was regularly taking time off work to go to rehab for his bad back, painful knees and stiff neck. And in my humble opinion, that is because ergonomics don't work. Now, you might consider that an extreme opinion, but I have my reasons. Let's talk about it. Before we get into why I don't like ergonomics, I want to give it its dues and talk about the things that I do like about it. The first step to solving a problem is to recognise that you have a problem. Humans are supposed to do human things. Hunting, gathering, being outside, walking, lots and 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 lots of walking. Offices and workplaces in general are to produce work, whatever that work may be. Generally, it's not hunting, gathering, or walking. And to some degree, ergonomics as a field of study has recognized that and has recognized that there's a difference between what humans should be doing and what they are doing. And it's trying to find the middle. Now, I don't think it's doing a great job at that, but we'll get back to that in a little bit. The other thing I will give to ergonomics is that in general, it's kind of heading in the right direction. Whilst it's still very prevalent, it's not all about sitting positions and gadgets as much anymore. It's more about the recognition that the office lifestyle is terrible because it's so sedentary. Again, we'll get to that. Unfortunately, that's where my positives end. So where should I start? Well, I think I should start with this poster. And when I say this poster, I mean the poster. This is the ergonomics poster. It's the one in your office. It's the one you'll see if you ever go for any ergonomics training. And if you type in ergonomics and click images, it's almost literally the only thing there. There are many variations, but they all basically say the same thing. So what's wrong with this poster? I mean, it's teaching me how to sit well. Right? Well, it misses a few key things about humans and the way that they work. Humans are designed to do human things, and one of those human things is not sitting in the same position for eight hours a day. Any position that you stay in for a really long period of time doing repetitive tasks is going to cause problems, even if it is the right position. Another thing to mention about this poster is that whilst we're told to sit like this, it doesn't really work for anyone because humans don't stay still constantly. We adjust, we shift our position, and in the end, we just go back to looking like the deflated balloon that we did before, just like everyone else. But if there was an ideal position, what would it be? Well, while I don't think there is any such thing as an ideal position when you use it for five, six, seven, or eight plus hours a day, I'd argue that the Asian squat or the Slav squat for you cultured people out there is probably much closer to the natural ideal. And my reasoning is that this appears to be the most commonly used position in cultures where they don't use chairs on a regular basis. It's a fairly relaxed position once you get used to it and comes with the added benefit of never getting a wet bum when you sit down on what you think is dry grass. Talking more practically, it does have a lot of real uses. First of all, because you're on your feet instead of on your bum, it makes it much easier to actually use all of your strength. Not that that's that useful in an office, but recently I've been landscaping a garden and the amount of times where I needed to be low to the ground but also to be able to pull with my full strength is surprising. And it's just not as easy when you're sitting. Secondly, and more importantly to an office, squatting puts your body in a position of almost full flexion, as in your limbs are all flexed to almost their maximum degree. Now, while that may not initially sound good, the benefit of it is that over the course of a day, your body will have had more range of movement. As in, when you're in your squat position, your body will be fully flexed. And when you're in a standing position, your body will be mostly extended. This gives a larger range of joint movement throughout the day. Sitting, unfortunately, is just kind of a sad middle ground. You're not really 
using the full range in any of your joints in any direction. Over time, this leads to less flexibility and less mobility. So to summarize, no particular position is perfect. All positions have a problem when used for long periods of time doing repetitive actions. I like the squat, but again, it's not perfect either. So what's next? Well, I think it's time to talk about ergonomic stuff. Chairs, keyboards, mice, desks, weird elastic band things that go around your back. Let's call them ergonomic gadgets. Let's start with some of the things that are completely useless. Those elastic band things that I just mentioned that go around your chest and force your chest into a particular position. These are the most common ones you see, but I've also seen some for the lower back. I've also seen some for the neck, which look absolutely horrific. Unfortunately, anything that just solves the symptom is not solving the cause. As soon as you take that chest strap off, your posture is naturally going to recede back to where it started. Now, if you wear it for six years straight, it might take another six years to go back, but that doesn't mean that your posture is healthy. It just means that you forced your muscles, tendons, ligaments, and bones into a particular position. And to go along with these chest straps, I would actually put ergonomic chairs in. I generally think that the design of the chair is a bit like the poster from earlier. Using an ergonomic chair, you are meant to sit in one position and one position alone, the position dictated to you by the chair. Unfortunately, humans aren't meant to sit in one position. And therefore, even if the chair is designed to be sat in one way, you will naturally slouch back to your deflated balloon position. I've seen it in myself. I've had fancy desk chairs that are meant to make you sit in a certain way and it didn't work. I just went back to lolling over the arm of it like I did with every other chair. Unfortunately, anything that makes you do something one specific way is always going to have its limitations. But there is another kind of ergonomic gadget. And as a general rule, we can class these as things that are variations on what you would normally do. One of the best examples of this are things like computer mice. So you've got just... The point being that options are good. Humans thrive off of variability. It's not good for us to repeat the same thing over and over again. But if you do need to spend a lot of time working at a computer, having multiple choices is optimal. Especially as if you already own a laptop, it's not that expensive to buy a cheap normal mouse and a cheap ergonomic mouse, and that gives you three options. Also, a normal ambidextrous mouse can also be used with your other hand, which gives you multiple choices for how you're going to use your mouse. And the same thing is true for keyboards. Now, obviously I'm talking mostly about offices at the moment, but this can work for other industries as well. For instance, my dad's a builder and when he's working on building sites, he often has to cut pieces of wood with a handsaw. Traditionally, English handsaws are push cut, as in on the push stroke, they cut through the wood. Japanese handsaws, on the other hand, are pull cut. When you pull on the saw, that's when it makes a cut. So if you started having repetitive strain injuries from using a saw too much, you could try using the other type of saw. This isn't an argument about whether Japanese saws or Western saws are better. It's saying that both of them are good and we can switch between them. Again, I can't go through a list of every industry that exists, but you can try to apply this concept to anything you're doing. So on that note, why don't we take a look at my current desk setup and see what I'm doing, what I'm doing right and what I'm doing wrong. Now, if you haven't seen any of my other videos, you probably think I'm a crazy person. Yes, this is my desk. No, I don't have a chair. I love it. I love it. I really, really like my desk, but it does have some flaws. Get it? Because it's, it's, cause it's on the floor. <laughs> but seriously, this is a good desk setup and I'll explain why in a minute, but I wasn't joking when I said there were flaws. Okay, I was joking, but I wasn't really joking when I said that it has flaws. It does have its limits and I'll get to that as well. So what do I like about sitting on the floor? Well, sitting on the floor gives you lots and lots of options, which a chair can do if it's big enough. But generally with chairs, you are either confined by the fact that if you spread out too much, you fall off the chair or that there are arms holding you in. With this space, I'm not limited by that. I can move and be as large or as small as I want to be. This desk has been purposefully set up to be a little bit too high. And that's for a reason. So when I want to sit cross-legged on the floor, I have this um, car repair and maintenance manual. For me, it's the perfect height 
to sit like this and work at my desk when I want to just sit like a relatively normal person. While sitting on this maintenance manual, I've also got a few other positions I can take. I can do something like this with my bum still on the book, but a knee out. I can also sit in the Asian squat position while still on the book. Or if I'm feeling like relaxing, spin the book around, lean up against the wall, and I can watch something on my laptop in comfort and relaxation. Now, you might not think this looks comfy, but to me, this is very comfortable because I've been doing it for six years at this point, I think, or over six years, quite a long time. And then there are the other positions. Like I said, this desk is set up just to be a little bit too high to be comfortable. And that means I can kneel, have one leg up and kneeling, Asian squat position, this time without the book. And again, it's very comfortable and it's the right height for me to work. I hope you get the picture that by sitting on the floor instead of on a chair, I've given myself many, many, many options on how I want to sit. And like I said before, variability is the key. You want to have as many options as possible. In a minute, I'll explain what I would do if I had the ideal setup. But for now, I'm just gonna finish explaining the rest of this. So the other things that I do to make this desk work for me are, number one, I have three different mice that I can use. I've got this mouse, which I can use in either hand. I've got my trackpad, which again, I use in either hand or up in the shelf over there somewhere. I've got a graphics tablet. I need to buy a new one because my one's started to act really buggily. But before it started breaking, it was something I used quite regularly. Secondly, as you can see, I have two monitors. Now, I didn't buy two monitors for ergonomic reasons. I actually bought the second monitor for gaming reasons because I'm a nerd and work reasons. <laughs> But it has become very useful from an ergonomics perspective. Sorry, that was getting awkward looking at you like that. Which means that I can either spend my time looking at the left monitor or the right monitor, which means that I don't constantly have my face pointing in the same direction. It's either pointing a bit to the left or a bit to the right. And I'm regularly switching between them. The third thing that I do, which I don't do as often, is I just take my laptop and I put it on the floor. Okay, so let's talk about my ideal setup. And this is going to be my dream if I had a million pounds to make a dream office setup, what would I do? In an ideal world, I would have a desk that can switch between floor level, completely floor level, touching the floor, and all the way up to standing. That way, I could easily vary to any position that I wanted so that I could have the maximum amount of choices. In the future, I would like to design a desk that can go all the way to the floor and all the way up to standing. At the moment, there seems to only be desks that can go from sitting on a chair height to standing, which is unsurprising because I think the niche of people that want floor desks is already very small, let alone people that want floor desks that can also go to standing. Maybe I should start a Kickstarter. One day, one day. So yeah, that would be step one. I'd like a desk that can go from floor level to standing level and anywhere in between. Ideally, I'd then have plenty of space in the room so I could walk around and do whatever I wanted in the space. I would have monkey bars on the ceiling. I am a climber. I love to hang, I love to swing, I love to climb. And having something that I could jump up to and swing around on when I need to think really helps me. To take it a step further, I would like to have some kind of garden area or balcony just outside of my office. That way I can easily get out there for fresh air or even work out there if it's a nice day. And finally, I'd like lots of light and lots of plants because as a general rule, those two things are very good for your health. They're not ergonomics per se, but they have a massive benefit on your well-being. Okay, so let's wrap this up by talking about the ergonomics industry and the problems that it has. I think the problems with the ergonomics industry are two major things. The first thing is that the amount of research done in the industry is pathetically minimal. Most studies are short term, most studies are self-reported, and there's no real evidence for most of the things that are done, unless they are about very specific things like vibrating tools in the construction industry. But when it comes to offices, all of the things that they show on those posters, they haven't been studied in depth. And if they have been studied, they are all short term and they all report, oh yes, life has improved greatly for these people, but they never look at them in another year, two years or five years, unless I've just missed all those studies. I think the other problem with ergonomics and probably the reason why these studies aren't being done is because employers don't really have an incentive to spend a lot of money on this. The reality is most companies only care about the employees being comfortable enough to keep working. They don't really care how healthy they are in 20, 30 or 40 years time. 
For better or worse, probably worse, that's not their problem. Therefore, they're not going to spend a lot of money trying to solve it. Also, the other companies in the industry, the ones that provide ergonomics training and instruction, they don't have much benefit from doing all that research either. Because if they did, and it turned out what they were doing was wrong, they would have to change their entire industry, completely change their product lineups. They'd have to change everything. They'd have to go back on 20, 30, 40 years of what they've been saying and tell everyone, oh, hey, sorry, we weren't right. And so, as with many industries, they don't want to change. They don't want to recognize that this clearly isn't working for most humans and therefore it's not going to change unless you choose to change your own setup. That's one of the benefits of, you know, the new wave of people working from home. We get the choice to do our work how we want to do. We get to change our offices to fit ourselves and therefore if you do get to work from home it's your choice how you want to improve your working life. But that's enough of me rambling on. Apparently I've got a Kickstarter for a new desk to design. Thank you very much, and I'll see you next time.